because I'm the one in the shop using this material and if you open up any can of paint or any of the adhesives I was using it says right there it will cause brain damage you will die <laughs> and so that's what really led me to this but educating the client and hoping that they'll jump on board with this it helps me but then I can also sell the value to them that it helps them yeah it costs more so the, from, from my perspective, the conservation piece is it's the simplest, right? I don't spend it. That's cheaper. But when I have to buy it and the green alternative is 15, 20% higher, that's not sustainable. Back to that big question of sustainability. My, my design business model is healthy, safe, affordable, and beautifully functional interior design. Um, make a lot of compromises when it comes down to affordable. A lot of times it means reusing the existing products that are already in the home or consumers to know how to cut out marketing hype versus good information about these sustainable practices or this, you know, what's just a fad right now or what one company is trying to market to give them an edge in their industry versus what is actually good sound information. How do you equip people with that tool set to figure that out? I provide uh, product data sheets of the materials, the, you know, the adhesive, whatever, the finish. Um, so they can look at it and make that decision. If they have questions, yeah, you do that. But, but they'll pull it out and then, then you all use the, the certified respectable recyclers and they have to recycle the product. So that's kind of a new trend if you're, if you're aware of that. I got who, who works? Everybody works for different companies here or nonprofits. Who has a sustainable purchasing policy at their group? Or who even knows? Because um, it's it's a, again it's about that bottom line. We need more data about why the environment is is cost effective or you know, environmental practices are cost effective. And I don't think we have. I mean, I would love to see organizations like this really focus on building data around those types of things. <laughs> I think it's a huge issue that you would have to pay extra. I know at home we don't recycle because my roommates won't pay for that. <laughs> so I think if it were a service offered along with trash that we already pay for, um, it would be a lot more likely for everyone to participate. Because it costs more and because it's not convenient, they're not participating. We have an obligation to make it easy for Allie to recycle, because she's going to do it. She's going to do it. 